stand it up, Rob. Everybody's hungry for this one. From a street kid to the mastermind of one of Britain's biggest cash robberies, his full name is Ibrahim Lamrani Lee Murray, an ambitious guy from a Moroccan father and an English mother. He spent his childhood in a poor neighborhood, which led him to undergo a double life. The young boy grew up to be a gang leader and a top MMA fighter. He used to run under the nickname of Lightning Lee for his knockout skills during cage matches, forming a powerful contender feared by multiple fighters around the world. By his late 20s, Lee Murray led one of the most famous arm thefts in the history of robberies. So, what would make a thrived martial artist take part in such outlaw operations? Today's story is going to cover Ibrahim's life that went between sport and gang affiliations. Before we start, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. Lee Murray was born in 1977 and grew up in the streets of Plumstead. Murray's family hails from Bermondsey, a densely populated semi Docklands part of South London between Tower Bridge and Old Kent Road, much of which is a traditional breeding ground for professional criminals. But his father was originally from the southern Moroccan city of Sidi Ifni. Murray had a complicated relationship with his father who was frequently drunk and defined as frightening violent man, who was volatile and domineering. His father was always away for the first seven years of his life. Murray commanded his respects and obedience to the points of a police warning for mistreatment. The kid was initially raised by his mother while his father continued to live and work in the Canary Islands. Eventually, he came to England. By then, the family moved to a place near Basmarsh, close where Murray attended primary school in which he made new friendships. One of his friends was his future wife and another friend was his partner in almost everything, called Paul Allen. They used to call themselves the Basmarsh boys, described as happy kids. Unfortunately, when it comes to schooling, teachers found Murray unmanageable, therefore he was expelled. At that point, Murray was already living life on the streets with stealing and drug dealing as part of his everyday activity, to the extent that Basmarsh boys were allegedly in daily contact with Nigerian drug dealers. Eventually, Lee began to fight back against his father. The next door neighbor constantly heard noises from their house. One day, things escalated leading to a fight with his father, which ended with his capture by the police. That's what changed Lee into the man he is now, a thug. Their relationship grew so tempestuous that Lee Murray felt living together would result in death, so he moved out. His mother then moved back to the Abbey Wood estate, to a council house on Goverberry Road around the corner from her parents. Murray's home was 6 Gosto Road in Abbey Wood between Shooters Hill, which is known as a notorious area for highway robbery. The boys battled to set an inside picking system and believed that they were committed to look after Bat Marsh. Sometimes they joined in fights with boys from neighboring territories. Fighting was the norm for the young Murai and his friends, and was a way of settling conflicts determining who was the leader and guarding the neighborhood from competing estates. Murray was fearless and quickly became the undisputed leader of the Bat Marsh boys, a gang that was named after the estate they lived in. Ibrahim was convicted for the first time as a minor for possessing cocaine and marijuana and was sentenced to a term at Feltham Young Offenders Institution. He spent a year there, however, he managed to sell drugs in prison with the help of his right-hand man, Allen. Lee Murray was named in the Old Bailey as a notorious London drug dealer. It was claimed that Lee made a lot of money from his business, thus Murai proved himself in the field of drug dealing, he started controlling other areas and making sure customers pay. Murai himself claimed, some people would probably say I was a bully, but a bully to me is someone that goes for easy targets, and people who can't fight back. Me, I want for all targets. However, it seems like he was lying because many people say that Murai used to punch people almost at random in the streets, as well as habitually harassing people who run local corner shops. After becoming reputed for leading the thug lifestyle, 
Murai's suspicious activities during his teenage years did not stop him from achieving his goals. All he wanted is to be an MMA fighter. Upon emerging from Feldsham, Murai devoted energy to the gym, lifting weights and drinking weight gain shakes to add bulk to his lanky 6.3 frame. Joining him was Alan, who by then was known as the Enforcer. Presumably from drug dealing activity, he started training at two different gyms, London Shoots Fighters in White City for wrestling and Peacock's Gym in Canning Town for boxing. Both these gyms would help hone his skills as a mixed martial arts fighter from London. As stated, Lee Murray was known as Lightning because he was very fast and strong. Murray and Allen were soon using steroids and wasting the money they collected from selling drugs on expensive cars. The police arrested Murray constantly, and because they suspected he was a drug dealer, they tried to locate a snitch in his gang but could not get adequate proof to catch Murray. Given the fact that he was disrespectful to the police, usually ridiculing and threatening them on the streets, sometimes following officers around in his car. Some sheriffs at Plimstead police station told his biographer that some felt worry. It would be best not to aggravate him and added, he is a very dangerous man. Weeks later, Murai decided to marry his girlfriend Shioban, but their wedding did not end well because D. Murai was caught up by the police along with other drug dealers. Murai, however, got clean away. He got lucky, as some of his friends said. Driving a life full of crime, Murai didn't neglect his dream. His first fight was on December 5, 1999 at an event called Millennium Brawl that was held at Hemel Hempstead Pavilion. His opponent was Rob Hudson, whom he would knock out in the first round, living up to his nickname Lightning Lee. He preferred a method of attacking which was running into battle, windmilling his arms around his head with a manic expression on his face, a movement which joined with his protruding ears gained him the nickname of Alien which he hated. His first fight motivated him to begin training seriously. He jogged around the Abbey Wood estate every day and pursued a massive diet. His coach who runs Peacock's gym described Murai as a very nice boy, who conducted himself well. Bowers said that Murai reminded him of many other young men who he had seen in his gym over the years. Men who had come from disturbed backgrounds but whose lives were given structure by sports. Anyway, Murai was required to develop his grappling and jiu-jitsu disciplines, predicated less on brute power and hostility than on technique and intelligence. So in the winter of 2000, he gathered a duffel bag, traveled to the US to train at the famous military fighting system camp run by former UFC welterweight champion Pat Militia. After several fights, including three brutal rounds against Anderson Silva, who he would take his second loss to, he finally earned a contract with the UFC. At this stage, he was powering his heart and soul into the job as an MMA fighter. It was speculated that a path of fame and success would lay before him if he proceeded to win. However, as described by UFC President Dana White, Lee Murray is a scary son of a bitch both inside and outside the octagon. In an interview conducted before the Russian fight, Murray stated that while at MFS, he trained a hell a lot of groundwork and a lot of kickboxing too. He said I prefer stand up. Well, I just prefer to strike really. I like to keep the fight standing up and punch. Mind you, I like to punch from the mount too, I like to strike. At some point in 2004, he nearly beat to death a motorist who sideswept his car. He was indicted which resulted in the denying of a work visa to the US hindering his career in the UFC. Although he was to lose his job, he kept on making trouble. In 2005, he was hospitalized after being stopped multiple times in a brawl during the birthday party of Lauren Pop, who at that time was a glamour model. He suffered a punctured lung and severe artery wounds that unfortunately stopped Murai from continuing his career with his dreams of becoming a successful fighter. Now weak, Murai fell back to the streets and started planning to the biggest score of his criminal life. Murai and his gang of seven would execute one of the largest cash robberies in Britain at the securities depot in Kent. The operation happened in the early morning hours of February 22, 2006, but a day before the manager of the Securitas depot Colin Dixon was driving his silver Nissan Almera on the A249 at about 6.30 pm, 
he was pulled over just outside Stokebury, a village northeast of Maidstone in Kent, by what he thought was an unmarked police car. The gang pulled over the calf Colin Dixon and told him to take a back seat in what looked like an armored police car. Dixon had no reason not to trust the police and got inside. He was handcuffed and driven to a farm where he was reunited with his wife and 8-year-old son who had also been taken hostage after they answered the door to men dressed in police uniforms. The men claimed Dixon had been involved in a car accident before abducting the two and holding them at the Stepplehurst farm with the manager. Dixon was told at gunpoint that failure to cooperate would put him and his family in danger. At around 1 a.m. on Wednesday 22nd February, Dixon, his wife and son were taken in a white van at the Securitas Depot in Town Bridge. Upon being let in by Dixon, a member of the gang forced staff at gunpoint to open the gates to admit the van and other vehicles. The gang member faces were hidden by balaclavas and they were carrying handguns, AK-47s and shotguns. So the family and 14 members of staff were tied up and locked in cash cages. In just under 2 hours, Murray and his gang left the depot 53 million pounds richer. And what's even more interesting is that the gang had to leave behind 153 million pounds just because it wouldn't fit inside their van. An hour later, the staff triggered an alarm which called the police. The hostages were all unharmed but shaken. The Bank of England was reimbursed 25 million pounds by Securitas the same day and assured the public that Securitas would make up any additional losses. On the surface, the operation was a victory. Everything went as planned and these guys were professionals. But their luck would disappear within just two days with police making five arrests and recovering close to 20 million pounds through various raids and searches with the police on their tail. Mariah and his right hand, Alan, escaped to Morocco because his father was Moroccan. Murai was given instant citizenship upon birth and would be safe from extradition to Britain. The two men would go on on spending spree, buying villas, drugs and jewelry and spending thousands on plastic surgery for their partners inside Murai's 1.5 million mansion. However, as soon as Lee Murai lost 600,000 in a casino in Marrakesh, at that moment British Council were informed with news of money that had the same serial number of the cash that had been robbed from the Securitas depot. Therefore, Murai was arrested at a shopping center in the Suisi district of the capital Rabat for suspected involvement in the Securitas depot robbery. Moroccan police said they had to use specialist techniques to arrest the suspects because they were specialists in martial arts and firearms. But Murai's situation was somewhat more complicated because of his Moroccan heritage. The UK's extradition request was initially denied. The British government has been putting a lot of pressure on Morocco, says Murai's lawyer in Morocco. person wanted in extradition is a Moroccan national. He is Moroccan national. We have proven that many, many months ago. Murai was condemned of the securities depot robbery and was basically sentenced to 10 years in prison in Morocco. However, his sentence was then increased to 25 years in November of 2010 after prosecutors claimed that his first sentence was too sympathetic. Ibrahim Lee Murai is 43 years old now. He was asked about his future plans, he stated. I train, that's all you can do. I train and try to get as fit and strong as possible. So I'm always ready to fight. Rumors say that he will be released by the year of 2025. So, do you think that he could go back to his MMA career after his release or at least enroll as a coach if not a fighter? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos of crime and mysteries and much more interesting stories. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.